This video is a brief introduction for care workers to how you use the Platt Point of Care system. The Platt Point of Care system is accessed on a mobile phone or indeed on a desktop but much more commonly on a mobile phone by going to the website plattpoc.org. You can then log in using your username and password if you have them but much more commonly by scanning a QR code. You do that by clicking on this QR code button here and putting the QR code in front of the camera. After a few seconds, the screen has gone back to the server, accessed your up-to-date data and puts your jobs list for today in front of you. As you can see, this care worker has already gone to the first five visits because they've got big green ticks. And the one that they're at now is this one here for Kath Earnshaw, who prefers to be called Kathy. You can see here any additional information about the booking. So I can see here that there's a warning associated with Cathy and that there's some meds involved in this session. I can also see what my bookings are for tomorrow and indeed going forward for several days, depending on how the organisation has chosen to make them available. For each booking, I can drill down and see what the details are and I can see what the meds are. And you can see that I can't do anything here apart from access the uh, the body map uh, for topical meds and I can see what the tasks are but again I can't do anything with the tasks until I'm checked into the booking. I can see where the booking is, I can get a map, I can get a map from where I am to where the booking is, I can see any key safe information if this care worker is going to a client who has got a care plan set up. This, uh, this client name here is live and clickable and I can access the care plan and see anything I want to about the client. There's much more detail about care plan on another video which will be linked in the comments from this video. Now to actually do something with this booking I need to check in and I can check in in one of two ways. I can check in by scanning the QR code that should be present at the client's home or if there is no QR code visible then I can do a manual check-in. In this case I'm able to locate the QR code so I click on the check-in with the QR code, put the QR code in front of the camera and it's telling me that the time, current time is well, slightly adjusted for time it takes me to get me from the front door to the uh, to the client's folder and it logs me in. If I wanted to change that time you'd have seen that there was a uh, an ability to do so down at the bottom left. Now I'm checked into the booking when I click on the meds I get to see all the options that I can do with the meds. Now in this case it's a single care worker booking so I have to fill in all the meds. In the case of a double up, a, a double hander one care worker is arbitrarily determined to be the the logging care worker and the other one can see the meds in the way that we saw them earlier when we weren't checked in but they can't make modifications and the same for tasks okay so if i am able to successfully administer a medication i can click the green tick and you'll notice that the header changed very briefly to a blue header. That means there's a message going back to the server. So the office have already been informed that this med has been administered. I can do that again for this one. Now you'll notice here that there's a glyph for the remaining three or these next three uh, that looks a little bit like a noughts and crosses board. But this actually means that they're part of a blister pack, as indeed the, some of the previous ones were. But, if I am able to administer the whole of the blister pack, then rather than clicking each three green ticks, three of the green ticks, I can go on the menu, at the hamburger menu, which I access through this kind of three things that look a bit like a hamburger, and click blister pack taken. And those three all get checked together. Now, some other things can happen. Um, sometimes you're not able to administer the medication for one reason or another, and uh, in this case, well, let's say in this one, I'm not able to put the, the cream on. So I click on the red. And the reason I wasn't able to do it was that it was refused. If there's a new reason that hasn't been used before by this, uh, this client for this med, I can type something in here. But I'm going to select refused and save that. 
and we'll see that we get a big red cross and the background goes red. Another thing that we could do is to leave it out for the client to take later if that's been enabled by your organisation. So in this case it has and I'll click on it and we get this to show that it's been left out for taking later. This med here has uh, got a little question mark by it which means it's a PRN medication. So if I give it then I can tick on the green tick. If I leave it out I can uh, click on the, the clock as before. But if I just ask and they don't want it, then I click on this one so that the system knows I've at least offered them the chance of having some paracetamol. If I then change their mind and say, no, actually, I do want the paracetamol, then I can click on the green tick. Now, you'll see here that they're able to take two tablets. So I click on the green tick and the system says, so how many do they actually take? They can take up to two. Uh, so they could possibly take one. In this case, they're taking two and they're taking two because of uh, a headache or a severe headache or something else, in which case I would type it in here. We're going to go with headache. And finally, we'll look at a uh, topical medication. And in this case, you get a little symbol here to show that it's applied by hand to the body. And there's this highlighted uh, bit here, which says that it's on their right arm. But if I click on that, we can uh, for those of us who don't really know what a right arm is, have a little look to see what was drawn in by the people in the back office or which part of the right arm in this case. So this is the lower right arm. And let's say I have uh, administered that. There are no further meds, so I can go back and we can see that nine out of nine meds have been administered. And we also have three tasks to do. And here we go, COVID safety tasks, which I should probably do as soon as I get in the door. And then I'll make a hot drink. And uh, the system has been set up in this case for me to put in comments whenever I make a hot drink, presumably to say what sort of drink it was. Coffee, yum. No, that's not how you spell yum. Coffee, yum. And we save that. And I'm going to deliberately leave the make water available unchecked. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to try and check out of this booking um, because I think I've done everything that I need to. So I click on the uh, check out and I'm told you can't check out yet because of two reasons. The event log is too short and there is one task not yet completed. This will also have come up with one medication has not been administered if I'd left one of those unadministered. So let's uh, Let's complete the tasks and in fact let's say that this one was not done because uh, I don't know the water wasn't working so why was the task not completed water was off and the other thing that I needed to do before I could check out was put in something in the daily visit log so I go into there and I type some stuff so uh, uh, Kath was very chirpy. She liked her coffee. Uh, she wasn't chirly, she was chirpy. Um, now if there was something wrong with Kath that I felt the office should know about straight away then I would call the office or use whatever immediate messaging system the office makes available to contact them uh, in real time. If there was something that I was slightly concerned about but it wasn't super urgent then I would check this box here, flag for review at the office, and I put some detail in here. But in this case, it's been a, a simple visit and uh, I can uh, now leave. So I've logged eight words, which I think is enough for the, uh, the organization that I've got set up. And I can choose either the manual checkout or the uh, QR code checkout. And sometimes you might actually leave the, uh, leave the client before you remember that you need to check out, in which case you'd have to use the manual checkout. But uh, because I'm, still at the client I can use the QR code checkout and I shall do that. So that one is the client's QR code and again I if I could, I could change this if I wanted to so if I'd, uh, I'd actually stopped work five minutes before or something then I've got a few seconds left to change it and say no I was just sort of having a chat really so uh, I'll give a few minutes back or likewise you can uh, say so if you're doing a a manual checkout um, afterwards you can scroll back quite a long time anyway I have now done that and I am checking out of the booking and uh, 
I can then go back to my home page and we'll see I've got a big green tick against Kath Earnshaw. Now the next part of this is going to be about doing a visit to somebody who does not have a care plan set up. The office has phoned Will to say that he's got a new visit that's just been added to the system and Will on his home page can see that he's not refreshed his data for 13 minutes. So to refresh the data he clicks, pulls down and releases And after a few seconds, the system brings back this new booking for Charles Arrowby. Now, if you click on that, you'll see that this uh, client name is not an active link and uh, everything else looks pretty similar. So I don't actually have a QR code when I get to uh, Charles Arrowby's house or Will does not have a QR code to scan when he gets to Charles Arrowby's house. So he uses the manual check-in button and uh, He'll accept the default time and then he has to enter a reason why he's not using the QR code and that's because there's not yet a client folder. Now the system is asking me to uh, give it permission to know where my location is. That's because the way um, the organisation that Charles Arrowby um, belongs to is set up is slightly different from the previous one and the organisation has said that uh, they want to know where I am when I'm logging in and uh, you can set it up so that you're not allowed to log in without you giving permission so if that's the case for your organisation then you must click on allow otherwise you simply won't be able to use the system but this will vary from organisation to organisation in this case I'm going to click on allow and I'm going to say that I'm going to do it forever so this application will know me forever. Now this obviously looks completely different on a uh, on a web, uh, you know, desktop web browser than it does on the browser on your phone, uh, and you'll be familiar with the way it'll look on your phone. Anyway, so I've given it permission to uh, to know where I am. I am checked in, and uh, it looks pretty similar as it did uh, for the. Um, the client with uh, with a care plan apart from this is uh, is not a hyperlink but when I click into the uh, tasks you'll see it's quite a different interface so I've got two tasks um, and uh, the interface is quite simple I click on the task name if I've done it and I click on the exclamation mark if I wasn't able to do it and it doesn't ask me for any further information in this case it's only when you've got the care plan set up that it will uh, ask you for information and comments. And I'll go into the medication. The medication interface is exactly the same whether or not the uh, client has got a care plan. As is the daily visit log. So Charles was very happy watching TV. Fine. I'm now able to check out and again because I can't access the QR code I do it with the manual checkout and I'll accept the time I'll say I couldn't find the client folder accept that and I'm done there's only two more things that uh, I want to include in this video one is what happens when you accidentally uh, press the green or the, the red button or whatever on a med so if I, uh, if I press the green button and then realise I shouldn't have done so, it was the wrong med or whatever, then I can just slide it across to uh, reset it. And the same works for the, uh, for the red. So, oh no, that was the wrong one. There we go, reset. And the other thing was that uh, the visit log, you can revisit it as many times as you want. So I can go and put in a little bit, you know, this is what happened at the beginning of the visit and then go back and say oh and then there was this and in fact you can do this even after you've left the visit